Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, FCI Raymond Newcastle family, um, all our family and partners and all our friends out there. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And uh, we are truly excited about what the Lord is doing and truly excited about what God has in store and in plan for his church, for you and I. And especially in this moment, we just give God praise, glory and honor. I want to encourage you to get um, your Bible, get a pen, get a notebook as we're going to share God's precious word. And if you'd like, grab a cup of coffee and uh, just relax. And as we go to the word of God right now, we would open up this morning's broadcast in a brief word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning, Father, for this time of fellowship. O Lord God, that we have, according to your word, where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, who is at work within us and through us, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the authority of your sovereign word on which our faith is based, Father. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, for the blood that he shed for us. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for faith that comes by hearing the word of God. Father, I thank you this morning as I will share your word with your people. Thank you that faith will come in the name of Jesus. I thank you that all fear, all doubt will go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, Lord God, that you'll anoint my vocal cords. O oh Lord, anoint my mouth to declare your word to your people this morning. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the worship. I pray for everybody, Lord, that is under the influence of this broadcast. I pray that you will bless them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you once again for joining us this morning. We are truly excited and honored to have you join us um, as we have our broadcast this morning. And this morning, I'd like to um, share with you from the Word of God, from the book of Psalms, the 66th chapter. If you can go there, and I just want to talk to you about going through the process. You know, God has a special plan with each and every life, you know, you may be of the opinion that, you know, there's nothing special that God has in store for you. Let me tell you, friend, there is nobody, no individual whom God has created upon this earth without a plan and without a purpose. God has a plan with your life. He has a purpose with your life. And I trust and I believe this morning that you'll be blessed by the word of God as I share that with you. Now in the book of Psalms, chapter number 66, and I want to read from verse number 10. The Bible says, For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction upon our loins. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But you brought us out into a wealthy place. I want to read that again. He says, For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You have brought us into the net. You laid affliction upon our loins. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But you brought us out into a wealthy place. I like that. I like that. I want to draw your attention to something, friend. The Bible says here, God proved us. God proved us. That means, um, what I want to share with you is, and I want you to grab a hold of this, is that God tests what he has approved already. It means that long before you go through the test, and this may be you that I'm speaking to this morning, you feel that you are being proved and you are being tested, you are being tried, you feel that 
you know, uh, uh, um, circumstances are just over your head. You feel as though you're in a fire or you feel as though you're in troubled waters. But I want to share with you this morning, the Bible says here, you proved us. Proved, that means past tense. And what I'm sharing with you is that long before you even go through your test, God has already approved you. In other words, he's put his, his stamp of approval on you. It means that you will outstand the test. It means that you will outlive the test. Whatever test you go through, God has already approved you. You do not need man's approval. You do not need the approval of the world. God has already approved you and you will endure the test. You will go through the test. Yes, but God is with you. He says here, for you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. In other words, you are being refined no matter what you go through. Yes, you know, God has a plan and a purpose with your life. And very often, when God gives you a dream, He gives you a vision, He gives you a promise, He gives you a word, you know, it is always bigger than your circumstance. It is always bigger than where you're at. God never ever gives you something that equates to where you're at because God's plan for you is bigger than where you're at. God's plan is bigger than where you come from. So don't even look and, you know, consider... Um, you know your your upbringing or your background that has got that is irrelevant to what God has in store for you. God has got something great in store for you, and I want to glean this morning, if I could, from the life of a man named Joseph. Many of us are familiar with um, the account of Joseph. Joseph had a dream. In fact, you know he had a dream. He shared it with his brothers, and his brothers became envious. That means whatever God has shared with you, whatever God has given you, not everybody's going to celebrate it. Not everybody's going to be happy about it. Joseph had another dream. He went, he told it to his father. His father looked at him and thought, oh, but you are pompous, you are proud. But little did they know that God had given him the blueprint of his future. Hallelujah. So God has given you a blueprint of your future and you've got to hold on to that because that is the plan. And once, you know, nobody builds a house without a plan. You can't just go to a piece of land and decide you're going to put up a building. There's got to be a plan. You've got to go to an architect. And the architect is the one that works out the plan and he works out everything. And God is the master architect of your life. The Bible tells us we are the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. And I believe that God is the master architect of every life. He's the, mar he's the master architect of your life. And he has a special plan, a special design with your life. So not everybody's going to celebrate it. Not everybody's going to see it the way that you see it. You're probably excited about it, but not everybody in the world is going to be excited about it. But you hold on to it because God is going to come through for you. He says, you proved us, you tried us, as silver is tried. Look at, look at Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. He was sold out by his brothers to a band of Ishmaelites. Then he gets to Egypt. The Ishmaelites sell him off to Potiphar. In the, in the house of Potiphar, God promotes uh, Joseph. So much so that um, Potiphar's uh, wife, she becomes envious of him. And she, you know, she lusts after him. And she wants to sleep with him and cause him to sin. But Joseph was a man of integrity. And Joseph, Joseph's response was that, look, my master has put everything into my hand except you, his wife. And Joseph honored his master. And you find that Joseph runs out, so she grabs a hold of Joseph's garment. And then she fabricates a case against Joseph. Joseph now gets in prison, falsely accused, and he's put into prison. And even in the prison, God gives him grace in the sight of the prison guard. And God promotes him in the prison. Hallelujah. That even in the prison, God was with him. But not once do you find that Joseph becomes better. Not once do you find that Joseph complained. Hallelujah. That means whatever you are going through, do not allow the process that you're going through to cause you to become better. Instead, allow it to cause you to become better. Because what God is concerned about is your character. 
Your character means everything to God. Hallelujah. So you're going to be tried. You're going to be tested. But know that God has already approved you. So you've got to see. Don't see yourself as a failure. Don't see yourself based upon your past. And you know when you consider your failures of the past. Your disappointments of the past. That is irrelevant to where God is taking you. God has positioned you for a time such as this. You could have been born in the 1800s. But God chose you to be born in such a time as now because God has a, has a glorious plan with your life. God has anointed you. God has appointed you. God has called you and God has positioned you for this very hour and this very moment that we are in. The Bible goes on to say, you brought us into the net. It means that you will go into tight spots. Yes, you may go into a tight spot, but understand this, that even in the tight spot, God is with you. Even in the difficulties or even in the hardships, God is with you. He's with you to deliver you because he says, I am the Lord who delivers you. Praise God. Then he goes on to say, you laid affliction upon our loins. I mean, how painful it must have been for young Joseph. Thrown into the pit, from the pit. He gets thrown into the prison. Painful. But through, through all of that, God was with him. What his brothers meant for his harm. His brothers thought that they would bury him along with his dreams. But God knew that he had a plan. God knew that he had a purpose. And he had a design with the life of Joseph. So God brings along a band of Ishmaelites. That means it doesn't matter who's trying to bury you. God will always bail you out. And God will always bring you out to take you into something better. He took him into Potiphar's house. Hallelujah. So you find now Joseph's brothers, they took the coat of many colors. They ripped it to pieces. They dipped it in blood and fabricated a story. Went to Joseph's father and goes to tell him, listen, our brother is dead. He's no more. And then, they, then he goes to Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife, she rips his garment, uses a garment now to make up a story. But praise God, that's not the end of the story. We find that eventually Joseph comes out of the prison and he's set before Pharaoh, the king and the leader of Egypt. And in that very moment, those garments are irrelevant now. He gets another garment. He becomes governor of the land of Egypt. He becomes a leader in a land where he was considered to be a slave. That's how God can turn things around. My friend, this is my word to you this morning, is that God is a specialist at turning adversity, the adversities of every man, of every woman. God is a specialist of turning adversity around into triumph. God will cause you to triumph. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, that's what the Apostle Paul spoke of when he says, Praise be to God, who always leads us in triumph, who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Praise God. That word triumph, the biblical definition of triumph means, it means to overcome. It means to conquer. Praise God. And that's what God will cause you to do. He causes you to conquer. He causes you to triumph. Amen. So you're not doing it in your own strength. This is such a glorious life that we have with God. Hallelujah. It's living the life of faith. When you live this life as a believer, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tests. You're going to go through all of that. But understand, all of that is a process. It's a process because you are in transition. You are changing from your former to your latter. The glory of the latter is always greater than the former. Remember that, friend. God is transitioning you. God is changing you. He's transforming you. You are in transition. You are, you know, it may be hard. It may feel as though, you know, you are overwhelmed and things have become so hard. But understand this. You are breaking out of your current and breaking into your future. Praise God. You call those things which be not as though they are. He says, you brought us into the net. You laid affliction upon our loins. You have caused men to ride over our heads. You see, Joseph's brothers thought they had the upper hand. They thought that they were the top dog. But understand this, that God had a plan. And God, according to his word, he says, I cause you to be the head and not the tail. That's Deuteronomy 28. 
God causes you to be the head and not the tail. You're always the top dog with God. Praise God. It doesn't matter what happens. He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is what God said. That is God's word for you. Praise God. He says, you cause men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. I mean, look at the three Hebrew boys. They were in the fire. But in the midst of that fire, God was with them. He was the fourth man in the fire. And God brought them through. And you brought us through the water. Consider the nation of Israel. They get to the Red Sea. There's no way through. But God makes a way where there is no way. This is the God we serve, friend. He's a supernatural God. And you must understand, He is a supernatural God. He is your Father. He is supernatural. He is divine. And he, you are His offspring. You are His child. That means you have a super... You've been born again. That is a supernatural birth. That's why you don't live your life according to the natural. What God has shown you will never make sense to the natural. Your dream, your vision, your promise, your word from God is bigger than anything. You cannot compare it to anything else. Let me share something with you from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to read from verse 17. And I'm reading the, pas the, the Passion Translation. It says this, We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. I like that. We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory far beyond all comparison. Because we don't focus our attention on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but the unseen realm is eternal. That dream, that word that God has given you, that is eternal. Where you're at right now, that is temporal. It's a temporary station and you are changing from that. You're going to outlive that. Always remember this, that tough times never last, but tough people do. Yes, the times may be tough, but they'll never last. The Bible says they are short-lived. And when you look at it, when you consider it, look at it, in the light of eternity, see it in the light of eternity. The eternal God has given you a dream. That is your destiny. That is your wealthy place. That is your wealthy place. That is what I'm getting to now. He says, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. Many people, when they, when they read the scripture and they read it as, you know, a wealthy place, they like to look at it in terms of money and finances, but it is not that. It is bigger. What God has for you is bigger than money. Money cannot buy you or secure you a great and a grand future. What the Bible is referring to here, there's some translations say a spacious place. God brings you out into a spacious place. He brings you out into a place of rest. That is a wealthy place. It's a place of rest where nothing moves you, nothing troubles you. Nothing concerns you because your mind is focused on God. You are living in God. You are moving in God. And everything you do, you are doing it in God and not in your own strength. It is a rich relief and liberty. In other words, God relieves you. He brings you into a place where you've been relieved and liberated from anything that could, that could bring you down. It is a, it is a place of abundant prosperity. It is an overflowing abundance. And this is God's picture for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a place, you know, of rare both. Where you rest. Where God brings you into a place of rest. Where you are resting in God. Knowing that God is in control. And God is causing all things to work together for your good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want you to remember the first point, friends, is that the vision and the dream or the word or promise that God has given you is bigger than where you're at. It's bigger than where you're from. So keep your mind focused on the dream. You know, I'm, 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 I'm really convinced that Joseph had his mind fixed on the dream that God had given him because that was bigger than where he was at. And that is what caused him to come out and come through. 
And as long as your eyes are focused on the vision and you keep your eyes focused on the dream, you'll always have passion to live. It will give you the passion to live. It will give you the zeal to live. It will cause you to have endurance, to fight, to fight through it, to fight through the difficult times. Praise God. And in the end, you'll find that you'll have patience to outweigh to wait out the promise, to wait, wait, sorry, to wait out the process. You gotta wait out the process. Understand, you've gotta go through the process. You gotta begin somewhere. It may be a small beginning, but gradually, day by day, you are growing and you are growing into the garment, you are growing into the future that God has for you, which is a glorious future, and it's a wonderful future. Praise God. I just wanna um share quickly we can learn from jesus in the book of hebrews hebrews chapter number 12 and you as you all aware of hebrews 11 speaks about um, faith and hebrews 12 praise god hallelujah you know we read in hebrews 11 about faith and the great hall of faith and then it continues now to hebrews 12 where the writer of hebrews the book of hebrews he says this he says as for us we have all these great witnesses who are the great witnesses the ones who are in the great hall of faith and that is what god has called you to the great hall of faith we have these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds so we must let go Watch this. This is a word to you. We must let go of every wound that has pierced us. Let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination. For the path has been already marked out before us. We look away. Watch this. We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. Keep your eyes on Jesus. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus did not consider the agony of the cross. He did not consider the pain of the cross. He did not consider the hardship of the cross. He did not consider the heaviness of the cross, but he looked to the joy that was set before him. He looked and he saw you and I being born again. He saw the completed work of what the cross would accomplish. Hallelujah. And that is what we got to live forward to. Look forward to what God has promised, what God has said. You will receive in the end the place of rest. Resting in God and knowing that God is in control God is in con uh, that God is in charge and he'll bring you to that place. You know in the book of Genesis chapter number 50 and verse 20 that's the last scripture Joseph says to his brothers but as for you you thought evil against me but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. That means God has a great and a wonderful plan. It doesn't matter who has hurt you. It doesn't matter who has wounded you, um, you know, or who has said what. It doesn't matter. The important thing that you've got to do is release and let go. You know, the minute you become bitter, bitter bitterness can actually bring about sickness. When you read in the book of Exodus chapter number 15, um, verses 23 to 26. Let's, let's just read that. Let me just read that with you. Don't become bitter. Instead, become better. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Because God has got better in store for you. You know, Exodus 15 and verse 23 speaks about a place called Mara. Bitterness brings you to Mara. Mara was a place of bitter waters. The nation of Israel could not drink the water because it was too bitter. And verse 23 says this, says, When they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. You see that? You've got to look away. The, the nation of Israel, as long as you complain, as long as you murmur, you're going to stay in bitterness. And you're never going to have the sweetness. And God looked to, he responded to Moses, told him, showed him a tree, told him to cast it into the waters. The waters were made sweet. So what it is, friends, you can look into the word of God. God will give you a word that will take away that pain, that will relieve that pain. Let me tell you, Jesus is that healing balm of Gilead who will heal those wounds and bind up those wounds and bring you to recovery, to a place of recovery. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them and said, watch this, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Praise God. You see that? He is the Lord that healeth thee. Joseph never complained. And because of that, because of that, he tasted something that not everybody around him tasted. Wherever he was, God prospered him, God promoted him. So it's so important. Let go of the wounds of the past. Let go of the disappointments of the past. Let go of the things that keep you from the presence of God. Let go of those things. Pursue his presence. Live and dwell in his presence. And I guarantee you, you'll begin to see how God miraculously and wondrously begins to work things for your favor in your life. Well, praise God. I trust that you have been blessed this morning by this morning's broadcast. Um, please do sh share with us. Send us your prayer requests. We love to hear from you. We love to hear what the Lord is doing in your life. The details are appearing on the screen. Um, Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we just want to close this morning in a word of prayer. If you just stretch your hands towards the screen as we release the final blessing, the final prayer and the final blessing of this broadcast. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for you, Lord, your precious word. Thank you, Lord God, for faith this morning. Thank you for every person that has joined us this morning. Lord, I pray your blessing upon them father upon their homes upon their families father god upon their businesses upon their workplaces oh god i pray upon their communities in the name of jesus i pray for each and every individual father god whatever the need is if it's healing lord that they be healed in the name of jesus if it's provision lord that you'll come through father you are jehovah jireh the lord our provider and i thank you father You'll come through whatever the circumstance, Lord. I thank you that you are bigger and greater than the circumstance. In Jesus' blessed name. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name, God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying God bless you. We love you. Goodbye and God bless.